Chapter 29, page 206. Still there. It's almost 10 o'clock when the last of the visitors leave and the party's over. His parents come and sit on the rug by the sofa and tell him how it happened the night before. You didn't come home when you were supposed to, says his mother. As usual, his father cuts in. But we weren't worried at first. We thought you were out playing in the snow. But then it was 8.30, 9 o'clock, and you still weren't home. That's when we, were, when we officially started to worry. His mother called the homes of kids he might be playing with while his father started trekking the streets calling his name. They really didn't want to call the police. Only an hour before, there had been all that commotion over the little lost girl on Willow Street, and now they knew how it would sound. Guess what? Another one's lost. But when it's dark and the streets are deserted and every kid in town is safe and snug at home except yours, you don't care how it sounds. You call the police. And they came, like a flashing army. The same police cars and rescue trucks and emergency vans that had been out for the little girl only hours before. Now it was their street lit up like a block party. Only it wasn't like the little girl, says his father. We weren't finding you fast. And the snow was coming down, turning into sleet, then rain. You were out looking too, right, Dad? He says. His dad looks at him. Yeah, I was out. A piece of cake for you, right? He's thinking of his father delivering the mail in all kinds of weather. He's remembering how he used to sit in school and picture his dad hunched like a fullback, punching a hole in whistling blizzards. His father gives him a lopsided smile and a squeeze on the knee. Yeah, piece of cake. They tell him how slowly the minutes and hours passed and how long Polly tried to stay awake but finally couldn't. There are things they tell him and things they do not tell him. And when they come to the end, when the man in the snowplow finds him far from home and brings him back, and the rescue squad takes over the house and gets him dried and warm and checked out stem to stern, and he's just floppy doppy like a zombie, and they're both so happy, and his mother is bawling like a baby when they come to the end of the end, how they carried him upstairs and put him right into their own bed between them. By then, there's a smile on his face, and he's feeling something he hasn't felt in years, like he's little again. Like he's been hearing a bedtime story. So, says his father, just where were you anyway all that time? Where were you looking? He shrugs. Alleys mostly. There seems no need to say more. They stay up until midnight. I know you're not tired, his mother says. But why don't you just give it a try anyway? See what happens. He asks them if he can stay downstairs and sleep here on the sofa. He's getting to like it. They look at each other and finally say okay, as long as he promises not to go sneaking out the door as soon as they turn their backs. They kiss him goodnight, one final hand on his forehead, and upstairs they go. The house is dark and quiet. Everything is dark and quiet but the inside of his head. In there, it's still party time. The phone is ringing, the pizza dripping. In there, it's still snowing and still raining, and still he treks the alleyways looking for Claudia. But now it's almost fun because the rest of him is plenty warm and on the sofa, and Claudia got found by eight o'clock, tops. He closes his eyes and gives it a try. Not much happens, but he keeps trying. He hums a lullaby to himself. In the dark, a few small muscles here and there continue to stir. They do not want to sleep. They want to be out in the alleys, searching. And it comes to him what he needs to do. He gets up. He wears the blanket like a robe. In the dark, he feels his way to the front door. He feels for the deadbolt latch. He turns it slowly, as silently as he can holding his breath. He turns the knob silently, slowly. He opens the door. He leans out, trying to keep his feet on the carpet inside. The night air is cold on his neck. 
He leans out as far as he can and looks up. He smiles. The sky is clear. They're still there. The stars. He comes back in, closes the door, once again on the sofa. He pulls the covers up snugly around about him and in minutes is fast asleep.